Welcome back to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still requesting you to subscribe to our channel. We have many of our supporters who continue to watch our videos, they comment, they even share our videos, and I really appreciate you for that. Except that you have not subscribed, kindly do so to help us grow together. You can also continue sharing our videos. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Ladies and gentlemen, it is good to have a prayerful woman. That is exactly what First Lady Rachel is doing to William Samoy Ruto. In this video, I want to submit to you that the prayers of Mama Rachel are only helping Ruto, but they are not helping Kenya. And I want us to go uh, straight to, and this is something that Mama Rachel said on uh, March. 2023. When William Ruto insisted on the idea of uh, taking a policeman to Haiti against all the lamentations and the threats, First Lady Rachel weighed in on the debate and she not only supported the idea of uh, our uh, policemen going to Haiti, but she said that we would be praying for them. And this is what uh, she said. It was reported that Rachel Ruto announces the formation of a prayer strategy team for the Kenyan officers who will be deployed to Haiti, says pastors from Haiti, the USA, and Kenya will come up with a spiritual solution. So the clergy from the three countries, that is Kenya, Haiti, and uh, USA, were to unite together to pray for the team that would go to Haiti. Now, I want you to hold it there because I'll tell you what the prayers have ye have achieved. William Ruto knew very well that one of the arguments that Kenyans had put forth was the fact that he is hell-bent on telling, uh, taking our policemen to Haiti, yet in Baringo, residents there are crying and lamenting that they have been overwhelmed by bandits. So knowing very well that uh, this will continue, today William Ruto uh, said something that I want us to look at. On his Twitter handle, William Ruto is trying to cure this. He's telling us that the security operation in the North Rift has had significant impact in restoring peace. Recent incidents of cattle rusting and body are being handled with new additional measures. We are determined to restore peace in the North Rift and all other parts of the country that have witnessed disturbance of peace. I received a brief on the security situation in the North Rift in a meeting with the Interior and Administration of National Government officials. So there was a meeting that was held and uh, Rayo Mall, I think, was there. Uh, Kithuri Kendika was there. And they were trying to look into the security situation in the North Rift because Kenyans have been challenging William Ruto why he's not so much concerned about the security in Kenya the way he's uh, concerned about the security in Haiti. So that is what he did. Today, um, the UN security voted to increase the number of police that is needed in Haiti from 1,000 to 5,000. And that is good news to William Samoy Ruto. And that is a one, that's why I'm saying that Rachel, Mama Rachel's prayers have worked. And they are working for William Ruto and not for Kenyans. Because between the day that uh, Mama Rachel announced that they are forming a prayer band, three things have happened. One of them is the fact that we all know that the situation got from, from bad to worse, from worse to worse, and uh, the USA decided to remove their citizens from that country, and they decided to protect their embassy. And about uh, two days ago, Babaki, who is the head of the gang, is the gang leader in Haiti, 
gave a specific message directed to William Ruto, directed to the Inspector General of Police, Japheth Kome, and directed to the Interior Minister, Kithure Kendike. He said he would consider Kenyans as outsiders who have gone there to interfere with their peace and it is going to be massacre. It is going to be bloodshed. He's been threatening, but this time around, the threats were directed specifically to the Kenyan government and the Kenya police. Now, the situ situation is just bad. The airports and government institutions have been captured by this gang. Now, you know that the main reason why William Ruto accepted this mission apart from trying to endear himself to the foreign masters who gave him his win, is the fact that he wanted money. There's a lot of money that is being placed for this mission already. There are millions, if not billions, that he has already received to train our soldiers because in Haiti they learn French, yet we majorly speak English. So there is money that has been put to that effect and the training on how to combat the situation. Now, by the mere fact that the UN has increased or is, is urging nations to increase the number of the police that they want to uh, send for this, uh, to this mission from uh, 1,000 to 5,000 means one thing. Kenya, that are decided to be the lead country, will increase their number. If we were supposed to take a, a, a hundred, then we are going to take maybe now 200 or 300. And that means there is additional money in it. William Ruto is going to receive more money for training and more money for this mission. And that is why the prayers of uh, Mama Rachel have worked. They have worked for William Ruto because William Ruto will now get more money, something that she has been... I mean, he has been yearning, yearning to get. And people are wondering, of course, I, I understand, sometimes a few weeks ago, there had been allegations that some of our soldiers that, uh, let me just call them soldiers, policemen, who were sent, this was an advanced team that were, uh, was in Haiti, were killed mercilessly. And when I did an analysis here, someone was telling me, that I should stop being petty because we uh, know that there was an, an advanced team that had been sent there and this is a war zone. Even if we lose lives there, there is no problem because we recruited the Kenya police to go in the, in the, the battlefield. But then we should understand that we did not recruit our policemen to engage in external warfare. The police when they go for their training, when they apply, it is, in the, it is in the constitution that they are meant for internal aggression. And so, and that is what was said even by the courts, because the courts declared this unconstitutional. Anytime there's a problem that includes external aggression, that we would send our soldiers. They are trained for that. That is it. And then there are no interest in Haiti. You know, if there, is, there was something that maybe we were we are guarding there, if there is maybe a, an embassy there that we are guarding, then you would give us a reason. This is a very far country, speaking a different language, but we are still hell-bent on, on taking our soldiers there. Despite the warnings, because now the warning is coming directly, and I thought that we would even use such threats and warnings to, to try and tone down and just des decide that we are not going there. And I'm wondering, what would happen if William Ruth just decides I'm not going there? What is the worst that can happen? I don't think there is anything. We, we need to listen more to our people than placing you know, the interest of others before us. In my earlier video, I had analyzed just how a Chinese contractor attempted to throw a Kenyan worker from through a, a window from a tall building, and wait not for the interventions of maybe the colleagues would have been talking something else. And I have a feeling that we have a government that has neglected Kenyans and is listening to foreigners, is listening to other people, and we are playing second fiddle to them. And I'm a little bit convinced that 
William understands very well that it is not Kenyans who placed him to power. If it were Kenyans, then he would be listening to the Kenyans who voted for him. But the way he's listening so much to Biden, I'm tempted to imagine or to think that he knows very well who the appointing authority is. That is what he said during the coalition government when Raila, you know, attempted to suspend him for allegations of corruption. And he said, I know who the appointing authority is. It is Mwai Kibaki. So in this sense, William Ruto knows who the appointing authority is. It is the foreign masters. And that's why he's listening to them. If he was sure that he was elected by people and that even if he's uh, rejected by foreigners, the people who elected him would still give him a, sec a second chance to lead. He would not be behaving the way he's behaving. And so the more Madame Rachel continues to pray, the more William Ruto succeeds. But I don't think this is uh, going to help Kenyans much. It is going to help William Ruto. And I know this is good news to William Ruto as Madame Rachel. And of course, it's not only Rachel. She said it's going to be a clergy, a combination of clergy from Haiti, US, and Kenya. The more they pray, maybe this number is going to increase. Before we know it, they might even increase it because they increased it by now 4,000. And that is a very incredible number. They might just decide that they want 10,000 policemen. And that is why, in my considered opinion, the prayers of Mama Rachel are really working for William Samuel Ruto because money is involved and they are going to get more money here. So before we know it, I'll not be surprised if William Ruto uh, places another proposal, but we are taking more. But even if this does not happen in public, they can just decide that they are taking more than... How will we know? Because we will not be there when the soldiers, the, the police is being flown to Haiti. Like we are being told that others had been flown before we even knew it. We might decide to take 200 or 300. What will we do? There's nothing much we can do. And so ladies and gentlemen, that is the magic that has worked in State House. I think they should continue praying because William, William, William Ruto succeeds. And Kenyans should also pray for themselves because we are praying against these people going to Haiti. We are praying that God would touch Ruto's heart not to subject our soldiers to what I call... They're, they're going to die and they will be brought back by body bags. And our prayers are very different from, from Mama Rachel. Mama Rachel prays that as they go there, let God protect them. But we are play, praying that they don't go there at all. I don't know which one God will listen to. Because as always, God does not force people. We do have a choice. The meeting that was done in the North Rift, and they are saying that they have contained the situation in the North Rift, I don't think so. Bandits continue to kill our people, to kill teachers. And as they, you know, convene meetings with security officials, Al-Shabaab is also killing us. We are not safe at all. It is one problem after the other. Ladies and gentlemen, let us vote carefully next time.